Hi class! This week's experiment is on forces. Now you may not have yet seen forces in the lecture course, but I don't believe that that will prevent you from performing this week's experiment. I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about forces before we discuss the experiment so I can get everyone up to speed. Now force is any push or pull, and we'll be working with just three forces this week. Gravity, the spring force, and the tension force. Now unless you've been deep in outer space, you've always experienced gravity, and so it may be the most intuitive force to you. It is always pulling you down, and it pulls other objects down as well. So anything with mass is subject to gravity. And the fact that it pulls things down is what I most want you to know about it. It's always going to act down towards the center of the Earth and never with any component side to side. Now the second force to consider is the spring force. We won't be working directly with the spring force this week, but I would like you to see that inside these lab scales that you're provided is a little spring. When I pull down on the bottom, the spring begins to stretch, and then you can look at where the plunger is and read the number off the side to get a force reading. If I pull with twice the force, then it stretches to twice the length, and we can see, therefore, that the spring force is proportional to the length that the spring is stretched. The last force that you should know about is the tension force. The tension force arises whenever you're working with string, rope, wire, cord, any material like that. In this week's experiment, we'll be working with a little piece of string. As I pull on the string, I can feel the tension force pulling back on me. So in this hand, I feel a force pulling me this way, and in this hand, I feel a force pulling me this way, and that's the tension force. And the tension force, is, as you can see, acts in the direction of the string. Uh, if I were to hang a mass from the string, like so, the tension force is what's holding it up against the force of gravity. But what makes this tension force a little bit special as compared to gravity or the spring force is that it can be redirected by means of these pulleys that we'll be working with. So if I take the mass and I hang it from the pulley like so, the mass still feels the tension force upwards, and my hand over here feels the tension force towards the pulley. Two final things I'd like you to remember about forces are that force is a vector, and that means it has both a magnitude and a direction and forces can cancel with one another to put an object in equilibrium. Here, for example, is the gravitational force canceling with the spring force. Here is the gravitational force canceling with the tension force. And finally, here is the tension force canceling with the spring force. In all three cases, we don't see any motion in the objects involved because they're in equilibrium. Now let's talk about the experiment. The experiment will consist of three parts, and the first part is subdivided into four pieces. Before we begin, you're going to need to cut some lengths of string, and you'll be provided with some string and scissors. Cut three short lengths of string, about this long, and it should be able to roughly span the distance between the two pulleys. The fourth length of string will be much longer, and it should be able to comfortably drape over the pulleys with a little of extra room to tie some knots in the ends. With your shorter strings, in one of them, put a loop in one end and leave the other end free. In the two other short strings, put loops in both ends. Now in the first part of the experiment, what you'll do is take a mass hanger and put it in one of your double looped strings and then hang a 200 gram mass on that hanger. Take the free end of the string and attach it to the scale and then read the value that comes off and make sure that you read it in newtons and not in grams which is on the other side. Now we were told that the mass is 200 grams, and the hanger is 50 grams. Those are what's known as nominal values. A nominal value is a number that was given to you as opposed to one that was experimentally determined. Furthermore, we don't know the mass of the string. 
We'd like to have exact values for all of those because they were hanging directly off of the scale, and so I would like you to place all three of them on a triple beam balance and find their mass by adjusting it. Now take the same mass, hanger, and string and attach them to your scale and drape the other end over the pulley and take a reading again in newtons. For the next part, you'll take your string that has one free end and tie the free end around the looped end of the scale. Then take the remaining end and drape it over the other pulley. Get an identical mass and 50 gram hanger and place it on the free end of the pulley. Trying not to disturb the measurement too much, take a reading off of the scale. To complete the first part of the experiment, we'll be using two scales and the longer length of string. Tie an end of the string around each scale, as shown, and then drape the string over the two pulleys. Next, using the two strings that each had two loops in them, attach the hangers and masses to either end of the setup. Take a reading in newtons from each scale. In the second part of the experiment, we'll be using these two scales that turn as you pull on them. Now the first thing you should notice is that even though there's no mass hanging from this scale, it's not set to zero, so you're going to need to do that yourself. To do so, find this screw on the back of the scale and loosen it so that it can freely move up and down. This will adjust the front face of the scale. Adjust the scale until it reads zero and then tighten the screw again. Then do the same for the other scale. We should also make sure that the angles that we're reading are accurate. To adjust the angle, take a mass and string and hang it from the scale and then merely adjust the outer rim such that it lines up with 90 degrees. Do this for both scales. Now cut a piece of string to approximately this length, enough to go from one support all the way to the other. Tie the two ends into loops and put a third loop in the middle like so. Try to make sure that the third loop isn't in the exact middle of the string or else your data won't be very interesting. Take the two ends and attach them to the scales. And then take the 500 gram mass and attach it to the middle loop. To complete this portion of the experiment, take a force reading as well as an angle reading from each scale. As with the first part of the experiment, use the triple beam balance to replace the 500 gram nominal value with an exact value. Third and last part of the experiment, cut a length of string that can drape across both pulleys with plenty of extra length to spare. Tie both ends into loops so that you have a place to hang the masses. Get three 50 gram masses and three hangers and attach them. Take two of your 50 gram hangers and attach them to either end of the string. Place your third hanger in the middle of the string and observe the angle that's produced. 
Next, get a 20 gram mass and place it on the middle hanger. And observe whether this angle increases or decreases as a result. Remove the 20 gram mass and get two 50 gram masses and place these on the two end hangers and observe whether the angle increases or decreases as a result. Once you've taken all of that data, you're ready to go home and crunch the numbers.